Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Dan Harding, welcoming you back to the Power Motor Yacht Podcast. The setting for today's episode was a memorable one because I got out of my basement office finally and into the enclosed bridge of a Fleming 85 with the Power Motor Yacht reader Tim Armand and his wife Lisa as they made their way through my home waters of Long Island Sound. I hope you enjoy hearing about his boating experiences and how his dream boat came to life. The Power Motor Yacht Podcast is part of the Active Interest Media Podcast Network. This network includes our newest podcast, The Best Stories in Boating, which is home to the audio versions of our favorite stories from the magazine. And if you're a fisherman and you're most at peace with a rod in your hand, I recommend checking out the Angler's Journal podcast. Also, if you like to take things just a little bit slower, Troller Talk from Pastor Maker might be more your speed. I hope you give all three a listen. But without further ado, here's my conversation with Tim Armand. So I guess before we get started, Tim, thanks for... Uh Thanks for having us aboard today. Your your boat is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. First first time I think any member of the US media has been aboard a, a Fleming eighty five. It's it's been a hard boat to to track down, but I think for good reason. I think the owners are very eager to get their hands on it and, mm-hmm. and go cruising. But uh yeah, we've been cruising pretty much nonstop since we picked her up. Well, that's that's amazing. And when when did you take ownership of her? Uh, she was delivered in June of 24. Okay. No, no, wait, that's what year we in. Wait a second. That wouldn't would be very long. The, yeah, this no, no. is September of 24. This is yeah, last yeah. year you got 23. it. 23. And then, um, but it took about five months to do the commissioning once it mm-hmm. came. So we took possession um, Saturday after Thanksgiving last year. Okay. And we went, uh, we left Edgewater at 3 a.m. Uh, in order to make make it to Coin Jock that day, because you don't have mm. a lot of daylight that yep. time of year, so we busted it down the b- bay that day, leaving it even in the dark. You guys must have voyage. you guys must have been a sight at Coin Jock in, uh, in this boat. Yeah, I mean they have some big ones that come in there. Do they? Uh, there's there's al- there's always a bigger one. That's you know that's for sure. Fair. So I mean, if you don't mind, maybe we take things way back. And do you mind sharing a little bit about your your boating experience and, and how you got how you got started in the sport? Yeah, I'm a classic son of a son of a sailor. Um, I, I grew up on my grandfather's boat, uh, 1952, 38-foot mahogany Chris Craft. Beautiful. It was beautiful. It ultimately, yeah, what a start. It was, ultimately, was lost in a fire, but oh, it was no. a beautiful boat. And we just always boated from, from the time I was a kid. Mm. Um, and I always buying sailboats or inflatables or whatever I could get my hands on. Mm. My very first boat that needed to be registered was a 1967 Shell Lake, you know, the classic little red runabout with the plastic windshield. Wow. 35 Johnson. Oh, man. Pulleys for a steering wheel or pulleys for a steering system. Yeah, yeah. And then just, you know, worked my way up from there. It reminds me of the Alan Jackson yeah. song. It, <laughs> totally, totally. I mean, with the red and white. And yeah, everything. yeah. I love that. A hundred percent. And, you know, just worked my way up from there. I had um, four sailboats. So I did a sailing, a jag and sailing for a while, mm. uh, which I enjoy. It's mm-hmm. just, this is, this is more the way we prefer to go about it at this point. More of a straight line um, than a... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then through a series of after the after the sailboats I had a 36 Carver mm. uh, 44 Sea Ray 48 Sea Ray motor yacht the sneaker boat <laughs> um, 57 McKenna 65 Outer Reef 75 Viking motor yacht and then um, this wow so I guess of those boats like the outer from the from the Carver to today which boat did you own the longest the 48 C race um, uh, aft cabin motor. <coughs> we had um, 13, 14, 15, 16, it's five years. Okay. Yeah. And then. Is that about your average stint? And then, like, how long did you yeah, have the outer and the reef, McKenna, for example? The McKenna was also, so 17, 18, 19, 20, so four. Uh, the outer reef um, was only a year mm. because we owned the outer reef when we put when we put the order in for this boat Mm -hmm. and then I knew it was going to take two and a half (coughs) so we bought the Viking just to have some fun going fast for a while nice (laughs) so we bought the Viking knowing we were going to turn it yeah um, after 
you know, after this this boat came in. Okay. So, I mean, how would you use those various boats? Were you, you know, big coastal cruiser, a lot of Bahamas? Yeah, so we grew up on the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. Um, but once we got the McKenna, we started going down to the intracoastal mm -hmm. um, and staying in, in the Keys. Mm -hmm. um, so every year from 17 forward, we would do um, intracoastal in the fall mm -hmm. and then obviously in the spring and, and then um, Bahamas and, you know, live in the Keys and then go to the Bahamas typically for a month or so. Okay. Now that's, you know, that's turning more into two months. Um, so we would do up and down and this is our first sort of foray into the New England mm. um, neck of the woods. Nice. Well, I guess, I guess maybe then we, we jumped to the decision. I mean, were you, you know, big move. This is hole number three of the Fleming 85. I guess, how did you, how did you come into, into this boat? How'd you hear about it? And I mean, were you like, a, I feel like with Fleming, people follow this brand so closely. Yeah, I was, um, Fleming 55 was my dream boat from right. the time I ever first laid eyes uh, you, on you're it. You're not alone. Um, and I was b back and forth, I would say, I jerked the poor guys at Burry Yacht Sales <laughs> around for many years, never could quite connect on the right timing yeah. of the 55. And then, um, so I always wanted a Fleming, but then as we were looking, Lisa and I were looking for, you know, the the final, well, you know, you never say final, <laughs> but the, the ultimate boat. Yeah. Um, we really wanted a uh, day, I'm not a day ahead, we got two of those, a uh, country kitchen and an enclosed bridge. Okay. So we had, we went to this Fort Lauderdale boat show, must have been 19 or 20, mm -hmm. and looked at really everything in the, in the range. Yeah. And. Oh, you're fine there, Cap, no problem. We're very much into traditional look, classic design. Don't really, I don't want to disparage any brands or anything. I just don't really care for a lot of the more modern design. Mm -hmm. um, we came very close to pulling the trigger on another traditional type yacht that they were going to do, the enclosed bridge and the country kitchen. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I saw on December 10th, 2020 when I got the email from Power Motor Yacht Magazine um, that the <laughs> Fleming was coming out with an 85 that they were going to offer an enclosed bridge option. Nice. Which would in turn also have a country kitchen. Right. And I called my friends at Burry Yacht Sales and said, where have you been hiding this thing from? <laughs> and um, they said they rightly so, wanted to give their current owners first dibs, for yeah, lack yeah. of a better word, on the, on the first hulls. And I said, well, that's fine, um, but I need whatever the next hull number is, I need to get my hands on it. Wow. Signed a deal on it within 24 hours. Really? So, um, I mean, amazing. I knew we were going to work out all the details. Yeah. Because there are a lot of details, sure. obviously. But I, I wanted to get our name on, on the next available hull number, which was number three. Well, that's amazing because, you know, I guess Hulls 1 and 2 went to long-time serial Fleming owners. For, so then for yeah. you to come in, never having owned a Fleming and take on one of the flagships, is uh, that's, that's pretty unique. Yeah, no, it was, it's been a great experience. Um, and not that you asked, but I can't speak highly enough of <laughs> Fleming and the way they work so collaboratively with their, yeah. with their clients and their you know, the answer to everything is almost ye always yes, or mm -hmm. if not, here's why we can't do it because mm -hmm. of this, that, or the other. No, that is great. I, and I was going to ask, you know, because it's, you know, building a boat like this, you know, over in Taiwan, it's a it's a major project. And I got to imagine you probably could have been as hands on or hands off as you wanted, but you strike me as someone that would want to be involved. Yeah, we, it was all during COVID, mm -hmm. so we couldn't really go there. Because it was at that time, it was like a three-week quarantine in a Taiwanese hotel right, before you right. could even leave. Yeah. So that that wasn't happening. Um, so we, you know, kind of had to do it from afar. Mm -hmm. But we managed it with a lot of you know teleconferences and Zoom meetings and you know just sure. the way people did things during COVID. But we made you know they allow pretty wide degree of latitude of how you configure these boats. I mean, if you look at 
uh, whole number, I think it's six, uh, Frisia, and they're cruising mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. um, Asia right now. Yeah. You know, they, you know, first of all, it's an open bridge, but the interior layout is just completely different mm. from what Fleming had laid out. And we made some, you know, reasonably significant changes as well. Um, but there's a lot of choices, like that day head, that mm -hmm. was a, our addition, the day head up here in the pilot house. Okay. Um, you know, I added that because I just didn't want to have to go downstairs because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> no, that's fair. But the, and then just a number, you know, I could walk through the boat and show you all the different things like that. I was telling you about this climate break that we right. put at the top of the stairs. <laughs> so when we run open, we don't spoil the air conditioning down mm -hmm. below. Um, and, you know, just, they're very flexible. Mm -hmm. We did a, um, we turned our master shower into more like a bathtub by raising it into a step over. So we were, um, you know, wanted to bathe a grandbaby or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have that option. Nice. Um, so lots of, lots of little changes. And they've been, they were very accommodating. Excellent. So you never did get over to the yard? Mm -mm. Did not. That's Lots of pictures. Sure. I probably have 8,000 pictures of the build of this boat. Wow. Um, and they're, you know, just, it's an amazing process to see. You kind of get a sense <laughs> of why it takes so long. <laughs> right. Because it's, it's a process. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, you know, like all the woodwork. Most of the pictures had it looked like snow, it was like sawdust around because they literally set, a, set up a wood shop in the boat. Right. And you know, the raw lumber comes in and then they are literally, craftsmen are finishing it like right in this room that we're in. It's, it's amazing. I, I haven't had the chance to go completely through the boat yet, but it, you know, in every way lives up to the Fleming standard and, and then some. It really is the, the woodwork in this boat is absolutely beautiful. No, that's what they're known for. Yeah. And for good reason. So when, I guess Hull One came to the United States, correct? Mm -hmm. Were you able to get, when that boat came over, were yep. you able to get on it and yep. feel it? And It was an open bridge. Yep. So, um, you know, it, it presents like most of the other Flemings, just bigger. Yeah. Um, the There's big difference between the 85 and the 78 was that the 85 carries it being more aft. That's right. So it's not really that sort of classic teardrop design. Mm -hmm which manifests itself in the bigger salon, the bigger bigger and more usable crew area. But the you know the the 85 and the 78 the 85 open and the 78 are you know very similar boats yeah in how they're in how they're laid out. So it was still nice to see sure. um, especially the the beaminess in the salon really um, is translatable right from the 78 to to this boat. So then what was the experience? You're, you're, you know, you're waiting for this boat. Eight thousand pictures later, it finally makes its way over to the U.S. And what was, what was it like when it finally arrived? And what was kind of those, those early, what were those early days like? Well, we um, actually were at the port of Baltimore when it was offloaded off That's the amazing. ship. That's amazing. That's cool. Um, I love that. And they actually had to use, depending on which dock the ship ties up to. Sometimes the crane has enough throw to lift the Dump boat it over the side. Over the side, but in this case, it didn't. So they had to bring in a big crane on a barge. The crane on the barge was being pushed around by six tugboats. Oh man! And they went so they quickly cleared the deck. I guess getting our boat off as a priority. Um, I don't know why. I don't know enough about shipping, but they really wanted to get our boat off the ship. Yeah. And they went to lower the crane into the hold. And then they stopped, and the guy in the boat called me and said, they got the wrong sling, they gotta go oh re my the God, crane. So the they, suspense. So the suspense, and there's gonna be a couple of hours. So we went oh. into Baltimore, we had some lunch, and uh, but then when it finally was lifted up, it was a sight to see, because it was a little bow heavy, like a little bow oriented. Oh God. And it was a <laughs> hundred feet up in the air. Yeah, yeah. And they're moving it around with these six tugboats. Yeah. It was, we have, and it was, and they warned me. I said, "Listen, I'm coming, uh, so you know you can't stop me." I'm right, coming. right. Okay. And get they said, there. "That's fine, but it's going to be rough. Like it's been in a hold, and everything's shrink wrapped and covered with plastic. So it was, you know, as promised, kind of a, I want to say a mess, but just you know, it yeah, was, it was yeah, it made a not long trip. ready for prime time. Sure. Like these chairs. I mean, nothing. It was everything was all just shrink wrapped and right. Um, 
but we rode on it, and it was uh, it was amazing because mm. we got to see some of the early looks at some of the performance numbers, which were, if anything, better than what they had predicted. That was, um, that was gonna be that was gonna be one of my later questions was was how the performance looked though because there were some well and big knew, statements coming out yeah and early. I, I, I knew we were light obviously that's as light as the boat's ever going to be yeah yeah so I knew it was going to be and I had I, what I had said if I can go twenty knots at seventy five percent load or less I'll be happy and they said the looking at the numbers is totally going to happen. Right. And uh, that you didn't ask me earlier, but the speed at twenty that was only sixty five percent load. Okay. So when we're doing twenty one yep. twenty twenty one knots, it's just sixty five percent load. So kind of just I don't want to say purring along, but yeah, you know, you can, it's an kind all, of it's is. an all day speed. That's yeah. not a. I don't really focus on what is the wide open throttle speed because you're never going to run it that way. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a relative. But the real all day legit cruising speed is in the low twenties for sure. Wow, and the I guess sticking with the performance for a second because then I want to get back to seeing this boat teetering coming off of a off of a ship. But the uh, the big thing with this boat is like most Flemings, but this one in particular is going to be the efficiency. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard some early claims that I believe like this boat was at certain speeds was going to be as efficient as the sixty five, and uh, you know it's at lower speeds and more efficient than even the. the 78 because it was going to be kind of a different hull, mm -hmm. less less beam, or slightly less beam, I guess, than the 78, but it carries it Yeah, the 78, I think, aft, at its I widest believe. point is beamier, but then this is more, the, the beam is carried, carried more. Carried aft, more right. Aft. So, I mean, I guess, and you know, this, this boat was touted as a, as a true ocean crosser, like the other Flemings are, but I guess the other Flemings, you'd want some bladder tanks is for a reserve but you found all the range estimations to be to be spot on absolutely if not slightly better but so at this so we're doing 10 knots right now burning 14 gallons an hour um, mm -hmm. we probably you know we were doing 12 coming through the, the gut but that's right about right we might be getting a little bit of help from the current mm -hmm. but it's at that so with 3200 gallons of fuel I mean you can do the math but it's pretty rangy. Strong suit, but yeah, and at, at eight at eight knots, it's eight gallons an hour, and at idle speed, six and a half knots, it burns four gallons an hour. So I don't think anyone would cross an ocean at idle speed. <laughs> it would be a long trip uh, across the Atlantic, would, but you could. But yeah, you know, you certainly could with yeah. the fuel that it. Um, you know, just we fuel this boat up a couple times a year. Um, Amazing. So we pick our spots. Right. But in this, so you. Let's get into. Well, I guess let's let's get back. The boats the boats teetering, you yeah. put, but you, you get it in. That all goes well. Kind of a long, not, but to be expected commissioning process. Well, yeah, because it's it. all this is blank. Right. There's no, you know, the soft goods need to be. You know, it's all the soft goods need to be redone. Sure. Navigation systems, all the carpets. Um, you know, they got to put on the dinghy and that equipment. Um, mm -hmm. It just it's a it just takes time. Yeah. So that's, it was obviously frustrating, not that it, anyone was frustrating me, but it's like it's so close, but yet so far. Right, right. Kind of you just want to go so use it, which, which yeah, makes so, sense. And it was the summertime, too, so it was like, we're losing uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and we had sold our previous boat, so we were... We were boatless. You know, and that's not a good state for me. Um, I, can, I can relate. Or for Lisa. Yeah. So we, we, we suffered through. Uh, I know first world problems, I understand. That. Right, right. Uh, nope, I get it. All right, so then, boat gets commissioned. What's your first trip? Where are you headed? We were uh, wanting to get out of Maryland before winter, mm. and there was still a Makes little sense. more commissioning to be done. So we took the boat from Buryat Sales North in Edgewater, Maryland, to Buryat Sales South in mm. Stewart, Florida. And that was our first trip, the one we left at 3 o'clock in the morning, just because I, I wanted to make coin jock in a day. Um, so that was our, you know, kind of intracoastal trip. And how was, how was the first trip? What was, the, uh, what was that experience like? It was great. We had a bunch of people on board, um, which that's one of our themes, is we always have a lot of people on board. Mm. Why we have the fourth stateroom. 
Um, that was, it was Which is unique was, to the 85, correct? Um, can the 78 have a four? I, they can. Uh, oh, they okay. can configure, I don't know, four? That's a good question. I, don't, I wouldn't want to yeah. propose to be an expert 100% on that. Mm. Um, I think so. But it, it can be configured all kind of different ways. Sure. But our fourth stateroom could have also been the closet in our master um, stateroom. Oh, the closet. Um, it would have been a hell of a call. Yeah. Um, and since we, we used to live on the boat, some of, like the Outer Reef and the Viking and the McKenna, we lived on. Mm. Um, so when you live on a boat, you have to fit all your possessions onto the boat. Right. But we don't live on the boat. We actually, you know, we actually have land-based homes yeah, yeah. From, from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so you made the trip down. Who did you travel with? Um, family, friends, um, all of the above? Obviously, Lisa and I. And let's see, yeah, it was friends. Uh, my friend, uh, Ken and Michelle, who you met. <coughs> we had a captain with us at the time, because that was prior That's to smart. Uh, me having my own captain's license. And um, it was just, you know, why not, right? Um, but I'm, I, you know, I was always the operator of the boat. Um, yeah, friends and family. Just that's typically our move. Nice. The good thing about the Intracoastal is people can sort of <coughs> come and go because there's, you know, always spots where Somebody people can jump, jump on off. and off. Yeah, right. airports, you know, pretty much everywhere. So that was a quick one. It was like nine days, and then I left it in Stewart to have them finish up the commissioning, and then we. Um, I don't think we picked it back up until January. Okay. But then it was the ho <coughs> holidays and stuff in between there, so we we were just hanging tight for hanging a little tight. bit, and then we went straight to the Bahamas from Stewart. So we left. That's why the boat's never been in its home port of Marathon because mm. we went straight to um, straight to the Bahamas from Stewart. And how long were you in the Bahamas for? I think it was five or six weeks. Nice. Yeah. And what was that experience like? I mean, Nick is now so long in the making, right? It was great. Um, we loved the Bahamas, mm. and it was our first time really going further into the Exumas and spending uh, more time down there. Um, and then again, we had people coming and going. We have a, a condo in Nassau that has a slip big enough for this boat. Wow, nice. So that was sort of our home base, mm -hmm. and we were kind of hub and spoking out of Nassau. Mm -hmm. And then later, it dawned on us that people could fly to Staniel or fly to Georgetown or wherever from Nassau, so we just started staying out on the islands and people would just fly to meet us. Gotcha. But we had, I think I counted maybe 19 people with us, not all at once, but right, over, right. The, over the course of the five or six weeks. It was great. I mean, it was, we ended up, you know, you buddy boating with either people that we met or people that we had known prior, and it was just, it's, it's, we love it down there, so we'll pretty much, that's part of the annual loop is to go there, mostly in the spring. That's when, like, March, April is our preferred time to go down there. Do you mind taking me through, what is, what is your perfect day on the water? Well, in the Bahamas, if that would probably be the perfect day on the water. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you wake up, you have your cup of coffee, but there we always do something with the dinghy. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in Shroud and you're going to the Lazy River or Staniel and you're going out to the Grotto. So it's usually some kind of excursion. Yeah. Um, whether it be, or sometimes we just do a beach day. And it's just, you know, going out and, and enjoying the, you know, the time with the friends and family. My wife loves to lobster. She's the lobster queen. And that's what we try to nice. do. Um, if we can, obviously, if it's in season, which depending on when we go, it, it may not be. Uh, but if it's in season, you know, we're she's trying to hunt down lobsters, or everyone, pretty much everyone on the boat, but me dives. So people will want to go mm -hmm. diving. I sit up top and just look out. Um, I like your style. But the, you know, it's it's something. And then, oftentimes, and this is if you're talking about the perfect day, we'll have friends, family, um, like these uh, buddy boaters I was telling you about, we, you know, we'll, we'll either get together on their boat or ours and, you know, have cocktail hour, dinner, mm. all that stuff. It's, yeah. you know, we like, uh, one of my favorite pictures is we had, I think, five or six dinghies just hanging off the back of the boat from, you know, that yeah, guy, that guy, that guy, and, and they yeah. all, 
It reminds yeah. me of like it's like the grown up version of when you're kids and like all the bikes uh, are in exactly. the yard. It's like this, this is this is the that's ultimate a, that is an adult version. <laughs> excellent way to put it. And we because of the configuration of this boat with the you know, the dining room mm -hmm. and the galley, we can seat thirty people for dinner. Wow. Without busting out a folding chair. Um, and, and you guys love that you love entertaining and we do. And we we entertain, you know, we we're um, our basic philosophy is nothing worth having if you can't share it. Love and we're all, we always, you know, we have friends, family, relatives, acquaintances on the boat with us, you know, I don't say all the time, but a lot. Yeah. Um, and the good news is we can run the boat, ours, just the two of us as well, so we don't always, you know. You're not relying on no, we're not really having the other people. Quote, unquote, need other people, but it's, it's nice to be able to share and have people with us. It's fun. How is the boat operating as, you know, whether single-handed or, or just a couple? Because I think that's what's so, so interesting. You know, Fleming kind of designed the boat, and they were claiming in the early days that, you know, this is this is for the owner-operator. But 85 feet, you're on the edge. And there's crew quarters, right? There is crew. Um, we, there, again, you can, s the crew is highly configurable. Right. We have two singles, um, but you could do it like a captain, and a, there's a number of different configurations. Right. Um, the boat is totally operable by a couple, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, this is, by a very wide margin, the easiest boat to operate I've ever owned. Wow. Because of the joysticks and the thrusters and right, all, that, right. all that good stuff. The position hold. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I mean, and the, the joystick, I mean, the boat is a joy to maneuver. And the, the joysticks are different from the shifters because they can slip. The, the, the propellers can slip. Like if you put that in gear, your propellers doing 250 RPM right off the bat. You yeah, know, yeah. You jerk forward. But if you just ease that, I've seen it it's as low as eight. Wow. So it can slip and make very, very precise Touches, movements. Yeah. And then also because it's got um, a full keel, mm -hmm. it doesn't over, like you don't have to, it doesn't overturn. It turns, if you tell it to turn, it turns. If you tell it to stop turning, it stops turning. Right. And it's just very responsive. And I've put this boat in and out of some really tight spots. Mm. Um, just because of the of the systems um, that that make it that way. How many different stations do you have? It has a total of six. There are six. So we have sticks and um, shifters. Um, sorry, thruster controls here. Yep. But then I've got a joystick here, mm -hmm. and then one on either wing here outside these doors. Okay. One in Three. the back corner there. Four. So if you're um, backing in, yep, and then both down in the um, California deck, wow. down six. down below. So it's the six, and that the down below one comes particularly in handy if it's literally just the two of us, right? Because then I can also participate in the, in the lines, and so, yeah. But you can, and the, this controller and the joysticks are in these um, positions. This is where the position hold is. Oh, okay. So you can pull up to a dock, be ten foot off, put it in position hold. Get out your fenders, get out your lines, Amazing, take your right? time. What I don't care if the current's blowing or the wind's blowing, whatever. And then when you're ready, you just slide her over. What a game changer, I mean, it's, huh? It's really, un I mean, you, you feel almost bad. It's cheating. Like, it's, 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 it's cheating. cheating. Come on. It, it is, but, you know. But I mean, at least you're gonna, you, you've had sailboats, so you can appreciate what bad docking yeah, is. I mean, and the, and the, or single screw. Yeah, you know, I've had yeah. single screw in boards, um, you know, and you just, it's, the technology is just amazing. Yeah, and I think um, we just take advantage of it and, sure. and anchor, or I'm sorry, tie up in a lot of you know places where the, whether there be current or the wind or whatever. You just mm -hmm. you just don't worry about it. Now finding like in this New England trip, finding a place for a boat this big with hundred amp power, it's not always right. you know you got to hunt around a little bit more. Right, right. Um, but you know there's always. You can always find it. Mm -hmm. You just gotta, you just gotta not assume. Yeah, look for it and plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, anchoring is always an option. It just becomes a little more difficult when you have to find um, a place for the dog. Right. But you know, we love anchoring, and we typically will. I'll take. I'll anchor rather than take a mooring ball. You know, ten times out of ten, because I just don't trust the mooring balls. It's five points of failure in a mooring ball and there's True. only one right there. 
it weighs 212 pounds. So. Right, right. Well, maybe we can talk about the, the power for a second. Um, I believe this boat has kind of a, a unique battery bank, right? I mean, there's a lot of lithium yeah, ion going on down below. Seven lithium ion batteries. Okay. And that that's run for the uh, house. Four stacked, four kilowatt. Uh, inverter, so it's like 16 kilowatts of inverter power. Wow. It's pretty much everything but air conditioning. Okay. And water heaters, so it's, it's pretty much. Can it operate the air conditioning? Would it, it can, just. It, it's, we had chillers. Okay. So that's just too much. Gotcha. Um, they can configure it to run. It actually runs the air conditioner in the machinery space, runs mm. off the inverter. Well, that um, makes sense. It does, because. Um, you need it. Well, once you're charging the batteries back up again, that's the only time. They, when they're inverting, they don't create a lot of heat. But right. when they're charging, right. they, there's a pretty decent amount of heat, which is why you need the... Um, and the, the machinery space in and of itself is a whole cool thing. Yeah, I can't, um, wait, can't wait to see that. I've yeah. seen it in video, and it's, it looks amazing. Basically, the way I explain it, you take all the stuff that's normally in the engine room that's not an engine and just put it somewhere else yeah, yeah. in a well-lit, air-conditioned Is it forward to the engine room? It is. It's below the accommodations, okay. um, like down in the hallway. I knew it was below, but yeah, I wasn't sure, like... Yeah, it's fo it's forward to, the, okay. forward to the engine room. Makes sense. You're good. So, I mean, maybe maybe you don't mind me asking, I wanted to now jump ahead to the, the trip that we're lucky enough to join you on, is I can't believe this is your first time cruising, you said cruising New England. How far have you been up previously we normally stop in the chesapeake bay okay um and i had been uh, I, I did a sailboat trip in 2004 up to newport in nantucket Cutting okay Hill. so i've been there but that was 20 years ago wow um so it's we scary just scary that 2004 was 20 years ago <laughs> it's it like wait it a second sure that is. can't be right, right. Well, that doesn't sound right <laughs> someone do the math yeah yeah um but the so we just um wasn't going to do it in the Viking because it burned too much fuel. Mm. Didn't really carry enough. No offense. Um, the outer reef was too slow. Mm -hmm. So we just never had the right combination of range and speed. And, and just, you know, it just seemed like the thing to do in this boat. Wow. And then we, we, we did go as far as um, Southwest Harbor, Acadia National Park. Um, and then kind of worked up so we kind of did some things on the way up and hit up some of the spots we missed on the way back so this was, did, was this uh how many weeks into your into your first new england cruise are you or are we we're, today we're seven weeks into an eight week trip right now Wow. so we're you know definitely heading back mm -hmm. towards and then we'll go back and hang out in the chesapeake bay for another month or so before we head south okay how has the trip been? It's been great. Yeah? The weather has been fantastic. Every time we move the boat, it's like this, calm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a few, you know, chippy days, but nothing nothing bad. Any bad weather we've had has been while we're in port. And again, this is just dumb luck. Yeah. You, um, you all, the, luck. all the places we've stopped, we've loved. I don't think there's any we didn't care for. Um, maybe one. <laughs> names but the, um, it's been great and we I planned this trip back in January so I was calling all these places up the day they opened yeah yeah you know if you're gonna try to be at Champlin's and Block Island on Labor Day weekend you better plan that in advance that is I mean so, let's just reiterate you planned this trip in January with like detailed reservations to the day yes and on an eight-week trip and you didn't have to change mm -hmm. a thing no and I I would have put the odds of that at five percent or less that's you know. ambitious. Yeah, even that yeah. is, uh, that's amazing. So that was just, you know, we just gotten very lucky with the with the weather. I mean, even if you didn't, I mean, the versa obviously the versatility of this boat, you could have you could have gone places that most people couldn't have. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, sometimes we're riding along and you don't really, because when you're up here, it's, it's quiet and it's pretty very smooth quiet. and you don't really realize how nasty it is unless you step outside yeah and you're down below and you're like oh okay those are like good three four footers right you just don't really you know don't really i mean you'll take some spray occasionally but we yeah. really have hardly even put any salt on the boat wow um just and again that's just luck yeah but fog we've had some fog uh, <laughs> we had some you know some of these lobster traps never entangled one but they you know they can be a little tight. 
not leave you with a lot of room. Mm -hmm. But that's just part of it. It's fun. So other, give me a couple favorite memories or places that left a, a good impression on you. We really liked Block Island because it was particularly the contrast. I like Nantucket. It was, mm. but it's so like fancy. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, you can get $135 worth of caviar to put on your $50 lobster roll. Right. Um, and, you know, everyone's dressed to the nines and mm -hmm. it's just super A little fancy, showier. Yeah. Where, you know, Block is more like the way I grew up. Yeah. You know, with the kids running around yeah. and catching yeah. crabs and, you know, bikes spread out all over the place. It was just very uh, family oriented. Um, and you were there for Labor Day weekend, which we is were. so that's a, that's a testament. That's and we were out at the dock at the end of the at the Champlain's dock <laughs> with the you know with the party, and it was fun. It was, it was a good time. It was a good time. Um, we anchored only once at a place called Hadley Harbor. Oh yeah, um, in just off it's of Woods Hole. It was just a beautiful anchor. Yeah, and it had one of the rarities in New England, which was actually welcoming uh, beach, where they were like you know. Come Pic bring. picnickers welcome yeah yeah because normally the signs when you see the sign the sign go says away, go, go away go home <laughs> yeah. Yeah. leave us don't alone. bring your dog here <laughs> right so that and it was beautiful anchorage mm. and that was that was nice um i mean acadia national park is, is i love that gorgeous yeah um booth Bay. i mean we really liked we really liked everything newport mm. mystic connecticut mm. um was was great um, being in Boston, you know, from the water was fun. Yeah. Um, Gloucester, I love the people there. Um, and, you know, get Gloucester and Boston are pretty close in proximity, but two different worlds. Oh, yeah. So you get both sides of uh, Massachusetts on that trip. And, you know, going through that Blinman Cut Bridge was fun. It's really um, small, right? Is that the really small bridge? It's tight. Bridge? Uh, yeah. It's it's 38 feet across, so it's enough but there's a, the current can rip as much as like four knots and there. what's the beam on this boat um, 21 yeah so that's you know snug you know, it's 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 totally doable <laughs> um the, when we got there i timed it to get there at slack high mm -hmm. so that was literally nothing smart on the way out we were i'd rather be going into a, a current than having it push in yeah and you know you just give some power and, you know off you go it's not a big deal hmm so, I mean, safe to say, I mean, this, this is going to become the new loop. You, you made the reference before. It's like the Fleming Loop. Everyone yeah. runs up and down the coast. Do you see that becoming your thing? I, or? I do. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see why not. Yeah. Uh, we haven't. We're hoping to go further, like down BVI way. Mm. Um, not this coming winter, but the one after that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, once you're there, you might as well go a little bit further and just keep going down into the islands yeah and I could see we haven't really discussed longer range plans but I could see shipping the boat over to Europe hmm. or the Pacific Northwest although it's capable of going on our own bottom I'm, I'm not interested in that kind of hmm. trip um, on, you know weeks at sea that's I don't think it's that not, would it's work. not calling to you yeah no but that's I would fair. very happily put it on you know one of those float ons and yeah and yeah just I know, um, some, and they, especially in, in the Madden, they, you know, it works. I can see it. That'd be amazing. Where would you like to go in Europe? Um, the Spanish islands like Mallorca look mm. really nice. Yeah. South of France, uh, Amalfi Coast, Turkey, Croatia, um, Greece. So everywhere you know, in Europe. Is pretty <laughs> much the, you know, the... The northern, All of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? Once you're yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, the couple that I, it was actually just at a Fleming rendezvous that talked about doing it. Um, you know, they they worked with like a yacht management mm -hmm. company that seemed to take a lot of the um, paperwork and guesswork out of it for you. That would probably make things easier with you know, customs and language. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think you know having something like that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So when you were when you were coming up the coast, you know, so the this is hull three. How many Fleming eighty fives are on these coasts? Is there another one, or are you, are you at? No, no. Now? I actually uh, hull four is also an enclosed bridge. 
and that's yours uh, on the East Coast as well? It is. Okay. We were with them in Southwest Harbor at the same time. Oh, really? Um, um, cool. And they were sort of a little bit ahead of us. Mm. Um, when we were in New York City, Hull 2 was, was there. Oh, wow. Um, and so we've, we've seen, I'm sorry, Hull 1. I, I don't know where Hull 2 is. I think Hull 2 is in, in Europe somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Hull 1 was, was in Europe, I'm sorry, it was in New York when we were there. And then, you know, we see, you know, we, we've seen, in, there's not that many Flemings. I think they've just lo- launched their 400th boat in right, 40 years. Right. So that's, there's not that many of them out there, but um, we've seen a few. We've seen a few. So I, I guess to get to my question is, what's the reaction you're getting on the dock? Because i got to think, I mean, boaters, you know, are almost like car nuts. I mean, they must be seeing this and, and recognizing, yeah, wow, the, Fleming the, the most common. Well, the most common thing is that's the biggest Fleming I've ever seen. <laughs> yes, it uh, is. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're, you happen <laughs> right to be about correct. That. Um, or they'll, again, it depends on the, how much of an aficionado you are, because right, a lot of people, right. well, Fleming doesn't make an enclosed bridge. Well, they do now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've... You must get the that react- all the time, the, though, the right? Reaction, I mean, people just love to look at these boats. Sure. I mean, it's classic. Oh, I think no matter what Fleming you have, I think people are stopping you on the dock yeah, and wanting the, to... Well, they're all... Um, see it and talk to you. Yeah, they're all very similar. I mean, they have the... That's the 55 there. It's just like they just click and drag it down to the right and just stretch it and make <laughs> yeah, it Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a timeless design that works, and it's a good-looking boat. I mean, yeah. obviously, um, I think that or I wouldn't have bought it. No, but I, a lot of people would agree. Um, I think, you know, 20 years from now, whatever Fleming's putting out is going to look pretty similar to this. It's just right. going to be updated technology and... yeah. You know, like I'm not a naval architect, but obviously there's differences in this hull that make it right. as efficient as it is, um, and then it's also fast if we need to be. Right. Um, which is it's the best you know, of a lot of worlds here. Yeah. The, especially with the with going with the enclosed bridge, I think. Yeah. If we run like with those doors open and then I close that climate yeah. break, um, and you turn the air conditioning off. Like right now, the, pretty much the loudest thing in here is that air conditioning. Yeah, is, and it's that's true. not loud. No, but it is like what you mostly hear. Yeah. Um, so you know they, I'm sure you know you've heard this spiel over the years. I'm sure but they go to a lot of lengths to make the boat quiet. Yeah. Um, in terms of decoupling the vibration from the motor from the from the structure of the hull. Well, I think this is the first time you've ever been able to record a podcast while underway and not sound like you're in the middle of a hurricane. So yeah. that's that's a testament. So it's been, has it been fun for you to interact with all these people on the docks? Oh, yeah. And no, that's, that's one of the, yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, I've dock, You had, you had to kind of know it was coming, uh, yeah, to, coming well, to the yeah, territory. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, dock talk is, I, that's, you know, part of the fun of it. Yeah. Because boaters are a special breed. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're almost always, you know, decent people, <laughs> generally like-minded. Um you know, you always run into a jerk here or there, but yeah, yeah, especially um, Champlin's on a par- party every, weekend. Everyone was great. That's they did have to move us, which I'm not sure why, because <laughs> we I had made my reservation long before the person that ended up taking my spot. But uh-huh. they said he that was a regular like or something like that. But it was fine. We had a you know, and they gave me five free months like coupons when we moved. It's so. amazing how that yeah, goes a yeah, long it way. Sure does <laughs> you know eight dollars of frozen yeah, drinks, but yeah. uh, you feel like the king. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. Speaking of the air conditioning, I can turn that off if you like. I said it might just be a tick. La- I mean, we're I think we're almost done okay. here, but uh, you know, I guess is you know what do you, what would you like? Oh, actually, I actually uh, wind it down with my two last questions. What what do you want Power Marty Out readers to know, either about you guys, Fleming, the Fleming eighty five in particular? Well, okay, good question. As it relates to Fleming, I cannot speak highly enough of both Fleming and Burr mm-hmm. yacht sales. Just the way that they take care of their owners is amazing, mm-hmm. and how accommodating they are with letting you configure the boat just exactly the way that you want it. Sure, um, that's great. I think um, I know sometimes the enclosed bridge can be can seen as a little unconventional for. Fleming, which mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. but and I, I understand that it doesn't look exactly the same as all the other Flemings, but the the um, 
adaptability that we have and the flexibility that we have and how we can use this boat with this inside out configuration and then again trading off the pilot house for this country kitchen right that you know my wife loves is you know it's I would make the trade-off, you know, 100 times out of 100. Right. Because even we still open these doors and have the wind not necessarily in your face. Right. Which is actually but you're good. connected to the environment. You're still, yeah, yeah, you hear the water rushing. Yeah. And, you know, you feel the breeze blowing. Right. And I, I, it's best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. But, again, that's the choice that I made. Yeah. Um, and that's why if you don't like the enclosed bridge, you can Get it in the open. open. Yeah. yeah. Well, I but think I, I, it's... Mm-hmm. It's been great. Yeah, Everything we'd hope for. That's, I, I know, uh, like Fleming is so many people's dream boat, and then I think you know, the eighty-five being the flagship. It's uh, I gotta imagine there's some envious people that, that walk by on the on the dock. So I appreciate you sharing your boat with us today. The I guess my last question is, you know, kind of as a lifelong boater, I guess what has how has boating changed your life, or what is how is boating what has boating brought to your life? I think um, having raised my kids on the boat, I think, and then having been raised as a kid on the boat, I think it's very family oriented. It's a great way to like get away from it all and, and connect. So I think um, you know it's made my you know family relationships tighter, both with you know both in, in all directions, like siblings and parents and kids. Um, and then friends, mm-hmm. so it's just a very, um, I think, socially binding kind of activity that brings people together in a in a lovely environment. Yeah, so what you know, yeah. what's not to love? That's an incredible answer, Tim. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thanks, man. awesome. Thanks for listening to the Power Morty Up podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I hope you'll take a second to leave us a review and consider subscribing to the magazine, which fuels this show. You can do so at pmymag.com slash subscribe. Thanks again for listening and reading. And until next time, I'll see you on the water.